here we are oh. back again after a long oh. break. Bro, way too long of a break, man. But I mean, I get it. We both had so much fucking shit going on. It's insane. Yeah. Oh. So you know what, you know what my biggest regret in life is? What's that? Wishing that I was an adult. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's it's ugly out here. Never needed to come true. <laughs> Can I just like make a wish on my birthday cake next year and wish to be a child again? Right. Yeah, we've both had a lot going on. So I didn't announce it at the end of the last episode, but I wanted to be at the forefront of this one and say that I'm starting a new segment for the intro of Handled by Hotheads. It's called Blunt Force Drama. And what that means is you guys are going to email handledbyhotheads at gmail.com. And tell me about some toxic relationship, some criminal activity. Just tell me a story about, you know, if you got a meth head cousin that used to beat the fuck out of his girlfriend and you just want to fill your inbox up in one day. (laughs) (laughs) I know. So send us your stories. We're going to react to them. That's going to be a new segment in the intro. I'm going to tell you right now, if that shit is longer than two paragraphs maybe three she won't read it man she can't handle it (laughs) yeah loses interest way too fast keep it short and sweet guys bullet points just give us some sum it up and then if i have follow-up questions because it wasn't enough i'll invite you you know what guys just leave the vowels out of all of your words she'll she'll figure (laughs) it out just don't give her too much to have to read (laughs) yeah so, did you hear about that big ass fourteen foot long alligator in Florida that had a human body in it? Yeah, yeah, that's fucking wild. But also, it's Florida. I hate anything out of the water. I hate it. It's demonic. Uh, I hate yeah, it. when we were in Miami, man, those those lizards are way different than the ones up in clear water. They were literally like half iguanas which there were i was so just blown away when we were driving because there were so many iguanas like on the side of the road just chilling like it was literally like squirrels for them down there and i was just like this is wild like big ass huge like probably eight foot long fucking iguanas that just gives me salmonella vibes like that's <laughs> unsanitary crawled all over raw meat No, my brother lives in Dallas, and he said that they have these tiny little lizards, and he found one in his kitchen, like how we find find spiders up here. That's fucking gross. My mom used to live in Puerto Rico, man. She said the same thing, like, they won't hurt you. Sure they will with that slimy, devilish ass. You know what, bitch? I'd rather wake up and have a fucking little tiny lizard staring at me than a goddamn (sighs) spider. Fuck you. I love spiders. Don't fucking go there. I went into work one day and I flipped on the light and this giant fucking wolf spider started scurrying across the floor. Bitch, I just stood there panicking, not knowing what the hell to do. I didn't have any bug spray, so I grabbed a can of Lysol and started drowning this motherfucker. And I thought he was dead because he laid there and played dead. And I fucking turned my back for a second and I came back to check on him. He was gone and I haven't seen him again since. I know he's yeah. wanting his revenge. I was going to say, just imagine if he is vengeance-minded. Oh, he's mm. going to come back with, like, ten of his fucking bros. It's going to be ridiculous. Then you just sprayed chemicals all over his back, so low-key, you made, like, the Spider-Man spider, so he's going to come back. Absolutely, like, yeah. Yeah, Absolutely. radioactive shit. Oh. So, I know you sent me this, but in Illinois, a 35-year-old man charged with detaining and threatening to shoot five teen boys. He smacked one across the face, threatened to kill him. They were all teenagers, like 13 to 15 or some shit, or 14. What the fuck? Let's yeah, talk about that this that was one of second. my kids, and then I found out that sick motherfucker was released on the lowest fucking bond, I'd probably just kill him myself. That's insane. Like, like he- what the fuck? He had to pay five grand and just walked. Like, wh- I feel that was such a like bite the curb moment from American History X when I read that. Here's here's one thing I just wanted to say about this that I fucking hate. 
<clears throat> when you see shit like this and you go in the comments, there's always like, well, what did they do to his son? Right. There's, I don't give a fuck if these five boys raped Jesus Christ himself anally, brutally. That does not give you, the adult, an excuse to go fuck with somebody else's kids. Call the right. cops. Knock on the door and talk to the parent. You know what I'm saying? Like, I only feel the type of way about this because my son, he has ADHD, struggles with impulse control. We're both a little bit aggressive and vicious. And he takes things as a challenge that don't need to be. So, like, shit can get serious when he play fights. I have to be there to be like, calm down. You know what I mean? I know that about him. He's 11. Over the summer, this this father in our apartment complex came and, like, tried to throw a cigarette at me because he came over here saying that like my son punched another kid when my son pushed the child back by the shoulder because that child was like beating on him so he was like setting a boundary right well I mean all those people that live near you have literally (laughs) IQs of a goldfish so Man, I, mean, I could i could make a fucking episode on these motherfuckers to be honest God. and it would fit it's, in it's fucking wrong turn central up in there it's disgusting but yeah so he came over here and said i'm gonna beat his ass the man's older than me right uh, no we're not gonna do that so yep anyway <laughs> moving on A Fayetteville man is behind bars after police say he climbed a street pole to get into his ex-girlfriend's apartment and punched her boyfriend in the face 20 times uh, on September 11th. Huh. 20 times. Did they, who counted? (laughs) (laughs) Who the Uh, fuck was counting? (laughs) Ah, shit. Also, like, you're telling me that guy couldn't block one of those punches? (laughs) God damn. (laughs) You just sat there and let there it look as stupid as hell getting your ass beat or what? <laughs> <laughs> I thought I it was a dream. Up with him real quick, like, oh, <laughs> so you can't defend me, okay? <laughs> yeah, what the fuck? Anyway. Oh, shit. Downtown Chicago. Um, Here we go. September 14th, an assistant principal, 32 years old, shot to death. So... Chicago police responded to calls of a person shot in the hallway of a residential complex on the 48th floor of Wabash and Monroe. When they arrived, they found Mr. Joseph in the hallway with a gunshot wound to the head, chest, and abdomen. He was rushed to Northwestern Hospital where he was pronounced dead. They're saying that CPD was originally investigating this, like his calls, because this was a possible home invasion. Mm. And the caller said that the person who shot him or ran away and then Mr. Joseph was pounding on his door. Um, he was in a, a verbal altercation in the hallway and pulled out a gun. Oh, so he called the cops on himself. He was 45. So how was it a home invasion if it was his neighbor? I mean, his neighbor still invaded his home. Okay, what is a home invasion? Just breaking and entering type shit? Basically, I think it's just like... Yeah, like you bust into someone's home and either beat the living shit. I don't fucking know, man. I just hope I never become a victim of one. Yeah. Okay. So I was thinking home invasion was like a burglary kind of, but like while they're there. Yeah. I mean, basically, I think like something violent has to happen for it to be considered a home invasion. I don't really know. Yeah, me either. Um, Okay. Texas man allegedly broke into a neighbor's home and beat a six-year-old with a baseball bat, leaving the boy what unconscious. What the fuck? Another one of those. Why? What the fuck would possess you to do some sick shit like that? I don't know. It's gross, though. Jesus Christ. Speaking <laughs> of freaks like this, I want to see where we're at in the... um. I forgot his name because he's not important, but that hideous-ass FedEx driver who killed that little girl. Oh, yeah. I say just lock him up for life. These motherfuckers got autism, I swear. The more I learn about autistic people, the more I see it in the world. Anyway. um, I mean, I'm fairly confident I do. It's not a big deal. I don't even care. So do I. But even if we did, we have aggressive-ass, violent thoughts a lot. 
You know what I mean? I mean, either way, I'm not going to use it as an excuse for my fucking bad behavior. Absolutely. You are 100% in control of your behaviors and actions. There's no excuse for you to be disgusting. I don't want to hear that mental well, it's even disability more disgusting shit. whenever they follow up and say, well, I'm autistic. I can't help it. Get the fuck out of my face. <laughs> yeah. If you're like severe autism you're and self aware, no. Well, no, not even because you can be high functioning and not self aware. It's not an excuse for you to be this way. If right, you're exactly. severely autistic, first of all, if you're severely autistic where you can't help your behaviors because you're like. You shouldn't be out on the loose alone. Exactly. If you're that, if you're that severe, maybe nonverbal. Uh, and it's ju- you're just a body with a limbic system, then yeah, you should probably be in an institution somewhere living where they can cater to your needs. You don't need to be in a world free. <laughs> Correct. But yeah. Anyway, okay. Today's episode, you guys might remember, happened in um, 2011, I think. Yeah. So Ellen Ray Greenberg, the teacher that was all over the news very controversial if this was a homicide or a suicide but I don't my think opinion I remember I, this. I feel like as I tell the story maybe it'll come back because I remember it like I think I was living with you at this time but mm-hmm. anyway 2011 um, is yeah I had Lex in January so I mean mm-hmm. you moved in like the end of February March yeah okay well so yeah this happened in January so Okay, so she was born June 23rd, 1983, in New York City. She was an only child. Her parents described her as close to her mom, a girly girl, always happy, all that. In 2007, she went on a blind date through some friends from college. They set her up with a then-TV producer for NBC named Sam Goldberg. After a few years of dating, they moved in together. Sam proposed to Ellen in June of 2010. They were living in in Philadelphia... And by 2011, Ellen was a first grade teacher. Despite living what seemed like would become the American dream, Ellen had developed a pretty severe case of anxiety. Ellen's mom said in an interview, Ellen had asked to come move in with them. They trusted their daughter's judgment. So they loved Sam. And her mom said that she told Ellen to talk to a psychiatrist. Anytime anyone asked, Ellen would tell them her anxiety her anxiety stemmed from work which hmm. you're a first Tell grade teacher about it <laughs> i was gonna say like first grade teacher that's gotta be a stressful job man kids i remember i went to pick my son up one time when he was in second grade and the classes were changing or whatever they were doing where they were all in the hallway and i was Ooh. just like over fucking <laughs> yeah way too many little kids Okay, so on January 26, 2011, a snow blizzard hit Philadelphia. Ellen was at a school, or she was at the school, and they were dismissed early due to extreme weather conditions. She left work, stopped and filled her tank with gas, and went home. By 6.40 p.m. that evening, Ellen was pronounced dead with 20 stab wounds. Ten were to the back of her head, or to the back of her neck. There were 11 different bruises at different stages of healing on her body, so some were older. She was small framed and taking medications. Jesus, fuck. So I just know my opinion is going to rub people the wrong way because the way the story is told, people want to make it look like Sam did it. I don't. I believe it's a suicide, but let me How just... How the fuck do you stab yourself that many times? Let me get. Let me get into it. Sam told the police that at 5.45, he went downstairs to work out. When he came home, he noticed the door was locked. He began texting Ellen, and this is why people think he did it. His texts were like, hello, open the door. What are you doing? I'm getting pissed. Hello, you better have an excuse. What the fuck? Ah, (laughs) you have no idea. He was mad. You know what I mean? Yeah, but you just Kevin Hart odd. Ah, uh, <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, I don't find this suspicious though because I'm also emotionally dysregulated when I'm pissed off and impatient, and I absolutely. and that's how I am. I'm absolutely like blowing someone's phone. One hundred, real fucking quick. 
Yeah. Uh, so Sam said he tried to kick the door in and they had a latch on their door, like a hotel room. Uh, that was all intact and didn't look kicked in. So he obviously was either a weak chicken leg bitch. Because how'd you just work out and your heart's pumping, muscles activated, and you still can't break the latch? Or he got in another way. Like, you'll see at the end. Um, nevertheless, when he finally got in, he turned to the kitchen. There was blood all over. She leaned against the cabinet. And then uh, she was leaned against the cabinet. In the 911 call, he was panicking. And even when the dispatcher said, you need you need to calm yourself down. And he tried to calm his like tonality and focus. He was still breathing heavy. He thought she hit her head <clears throat> because he said nothing was broken, but he saw blood everywhere. He didn't realize a knife was involved until she instructed him to remove her shirt and perform CPR. He was only looking at the front of her at that point. So his reaction was like, oh, oh, oh no. Um, okay. And then he took her shirt off and, or opened it or whatever. And he was like, oh my God, she stabbed herself. So people think that this is weird. Like, why would you say she stabbed herself? How do you know someone else didn't stab her? But the door was locked. It was the blizzard outside. So who else would have done it? You know what I mean? People always put a fire wanna... escape. So since there was a blizzard, like the only in and out way to get into that apartment, like the blizzard had this the balcony like covered with snow and shit. They were like on the sixth floor. So oh. there would be no other way into the apartment. Okay. So yeah, but anyway, people always want to analyze the 911 call and try to find something that confirms their suspicion, like that confirmation bias and they want it to be foul play, but to me, he it seemed like a genuine call, and I believe he didn't have anything to do with it. But you guys can go figure that out yourselves. Um, I'm sure it's on YouTube. When police arrived, there was a knife set and a bowl of fruit on the counter, so they assumed she was making a fruit salad. Everything else in the apartment was clean and in its proper place. Nothing appeared to be missing. There were no signs of struggle. They lived on the sixth floor, and the only way in or out was the front door of the balcony there were no footprints in the snow outside the balcony she was home alone with the latch locked allegedly the fiance left to go work out was gone for 30 minutes uh they found three medications in ellen's name and here's here's why i think that she definitely did it she was taking xanax klonopin and ambien oh ambien will make you do some weird shit Ambien is going to put you in a whole different mental state. Absolutely. Xanax is a suppressant, so she's going to feel down. And then Klonopin on top of it, like, come on. So there was also a notebook in Ellen's purse that she was supposed to use to track her mental state while on these meds because that's how these meds work, like, when you take them together. Um, she shouldn't have been on all that. That's how I feel. And I feel like just that's with how crazy... This- by the doctor, and that's because they... Too many doctors are just too quick to write a fucking prescription instead of trying to solve the problem. Makes me you, sad. You definitely have to be self-aware to if you're sensitive to certain medications. Like, nobody nobody metabolizes this, not just medications, but, like, food and shit. Nobody metabolizes right. things the same as the next person. It's like your own fingerprint. You have to know yourself. And then when you go get on a medication... A lot of people just blindly trust what the doctor said because they're supposed to right, be Right, you expert, have to always but... advocate for yourself. Always. Yeah. So if something's not working for you, stop. Like, Absolutely. just don't do it. If you feel like well, your doctor's not listening to you, find a new doctor. This is not, just a disclaimer, this is not legal or medical advice because we aren't experts, but that's that's how I go about it. I've taken some meds before I found what works for me as far as ADHD goes. I didn't like how the first ones made me feel. Yeah, it's, so. Sometimes it's trial and error. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And there's no doctor that's going to know you and know what works for you or not. They go by like a chart. So they're just guessing. And right. hopefully they find something that's effective. But anyway, so yeah, the neighbors were questioned and they didn't hear any commotion until the fiance kicked the door in. That was confirmed by the neighbors. So I don't know why the kicking the door thing is still a question, but. A few hours later, Sam's dad called Ellen's parents and told them that she was gone and that there was no ambulance. The police knew upon arrival that she was too far gone. So that wasn't Sam's decision. 
I'm not being insensitive when I say this, but Ellen's parents in these interviews, they're struggling to understand that that decision was not made by Sam and his family. It was made by blind man. Yeah, it was made by professionals and it's been hard for them to accept that there was no hope from the point she was found like that. Obviously, that's a nightmare for a parent, but I think that their understanding of the event is where most of the outrage stems from because grieving people want someone to blame to ease the pain of the loss. So to add to the turmoil and confusion, the very next day, Sam's uncle and cousin asked the property manager of the building if they could go retrieve some of the important belongings. And she said the police were done with the investigation and that it was okay to enter the apartment. She double checked and she made a video state of the apartment before letting anyone in to protect herself from any liability. So somebody at the police station told the property manager they were done there. She booked a cleaning service, and when that was done, she let Sam's uncle enter. Allegedly, they took her engagement ring, car keys, electronics, and more. They didn't give the stuff to Ellen's parents right away, um, and they said that they retrieved them for safekeeping. They gave her laptops to the police and the car back to her family. Like, they cooperated when they were questioned, like, why would you go in there and take their shit? That's when her parents found the receipt from the gas station the day she died, And that fueled their confusion on why she would have stopped for gas if she was planning on taking her own life. This is where we should discuss that all suicide probably isn't planned. Maybe every scenario is different. Right, and sometimes it's done in a very irrational state. Yeah, so if if there are similar circumstances in most cases, it doesn't mean it has to apply to every single one of them. Those medications probably cause some of that, like impulsive behavior. It's a wild combination of meds to be on, in my opinion. Like, what if anxiety... Regardless, Ambien will have you literally in such a... I don't want to say psychotic state, but it will have you do some very weird shit and it'll have you, like, see and imagine things that are not there. If you don't don't take the Ambien and just lay the fuck down and go to sleep, it has a very, very weird reaction because I was on Ambien. I know. (laughs) I was going to say, I know three people that tried that, like... And all three of them said they're not even like crazy see stuff type of people, but Mm -hmm. they all had like abnormal effects with that. And And it's um, highly addictive. Ambien is. I had to stop taking it because I just would freak out every fucking night. Yeah. Um, Also, if you're like a person who has nightmares, it might make them worse. So I've heard that too. I know that the dude that I know that took him would have crazy nightmares, like wild shit, like a giant frog on a tricycle chasing him down the street. And when he would wake up, he'd have he'd be naked when he didn't go to sleep naked and he'd have scratches all over his body. Like it makes you do wild shit. So I laid there one night with my arms around Jordan yelling like, where are you? Where are you? And He's like, I'm right here. Like, I can't find you. I but I was dreaming that he was like floating down a sewer. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. It make it's um, a crazy making drug. So I don't even know like what it's prescribed for, but sleep. It's a sleeping pill. Oh yeah, see, a fucking entrancement pill. Um. Anyway, yeah, so yeah, exactly. <clears throat> so her medications probably did cause some of those like crazy thoughts paired with like impulsive behavior. Um. So like, what if the anxiety was also actually a result of another diagnosis she may not have had? Um, there's so much overlap in mental health issues that it's, it's hard for you to go like, just hurry up and get on some meds. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like you have to see the same therapist for like a minute so they can get a real feel for what's going on. But also trauma can affect anyone differently. And Sam seemed psychologically abusive at minimum, whether intentional or not. But you can see by the text that he had no problem projecting his anger on her. But Bitch, I got no means... problem projecting my anger on anyone. That's what I'm saying. Like, he seemed like you and I, like, emotional. Yeah, that's just emotional how I talk. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think that, I don't think that he did kill her, though. So, boom, the results of the autopsy came back. And there were a lot of, like, 0.2 centimeter stab wounds, which could indicate hesitation, like, jerky movements you know what I'm saying she's trying to stab herself maybe like she had a weird buzzy feeling in the back of her neck or something and she was just like fuck this shit you know what I mean the chest wound was the fatal one and the knife used was the one from the set in the kitchen that she was using 
So since the back of the neck is a weird and uncommon spot to stab yourself, it was suspicious, but still deemed a suicide. Unfortunately, a detective who made a a statement slipped and said homicide because it was confusing as to why someone would stab themselves in the back of the neck and shit. It really is. Uh, Maybe, I mean, maybe she knew, like, that's where your brainstem is, I'm going to do it. And then there's a hesitation because it, I don't know, but... Yeah, that, that's what caused a lot of uproar when the next day they had to make another statement backtracking and saying, no, it's a suicide, but the manner of death is suspicious. There was a lack of communication because there was still a search warrant for the home and the police realized the place had been cleaned up when they got there. Remember, the property manager was the one who booked the cleaning service because the police told her they were done with the apartment. Um, oh, damn, yeah. So the day of the funeral, Ellen's dad walked up to Sam and said, you do know you're the prime suspect, right? And Sam started crying and went to his mom for comfort. (sighs) That pisses me off a little bit. But I mean, that's the father. You know what I mean? So it's kind of like if they're confused, it just sucks for everybody. But to make matters even more weird, Sam said that he went to ask Phil, the security guard on duty in that building, in the building that day to come kick the door open with him. Phil confirmed Sam's statement except the part that he kicked the door with him because that's against company policy. So since the latch was in place, I think people want to believe Sam is lying because if he kicked it alone, there would have been signs of struggle, quote, quote. But my own theory is that Phil came and did help Sam break into the apartment, but he can't admit that part because he wants to keep his job. I don't know. So, I mean, yeah, was okay. so was the door kicked in? So they had, you know, those latches like the hotel has that, yeah, that long, yeah. So that was that was the lock. Like he could open it to just a crack. So I mean, Phil probably was used to like breaking into those and not like busting the the lock off. Like the not the door knob, the deadbolt wasn't locked. It was just the latch. No, I'm saying though, like, but was was the door actually kicked in? Well, they're saying that they kicked it in, but probably, no. I mean, the, the latch was still intact. It didn't look like there was any okay, damage. Okay, because you can tell if a door gets kicked in. Yeah. So maybe maybe he said kicked in, but he meant, like, broke into. Like, I don't fucking know. But it was just the latch. So if you have, like, a hanger or something or or a stick that, like, is so flexible. You like thin to put in there and pop the latch Yeah. Out. So maybe, like, Sam couldn't do it, so he went to get Phil, and Phil probably helped people that locked themselves out or got locked out from their kids or something. I don't know. Like, that's just a theory, though. Yeah, why would you ever want one of those for a lock? Fuck that. I don't even like chain locks. Just because it's in the event of an emergency. Mm Mm-hmm. So in February 2011, the case was reviewed again, and still the same outcome, suicide. The parents are upset. They want justice for their daughter because they don't believe it was a suicide. They've hired all these people to help their case, but unfortunately, no progress has been made. In 2019, the Philadelphia Inquirer newspaper released a front page investigative report reviewing the suspiciousness of Ellen's death. I don't know if the Inquirer is a legit paper or one of those like libel style newspapers. I don't trust anything with the word Inquirer in it. Yeah. Yeah. So, however, this brought a lot of attention to the case again, and a forensic pathologist in Pittsburgh went on TV at the request of the family to review the case and said some of the wounds were impossible to do to herself. But, I mean, I can go play devil's advocate in front of a camera for the right price, too, bitch. Know what I mean? It's impossible (laughs) these days. Yeah. So, a lot of professionals, quote, quote, and by professionals, I mean, like, private investigators, which almost anybody can be a, a PI with a six to eight week online class and a state exam. But No shit. How much does it cost? I don't know. Um, it's probably different state to state, but so PIs, retired, retired forensic pros, all those people, um, they have came forward to express their suspicion too. So law enforcement has had pressure applied by people concerned with the truth although the truth has been determined multiple times and the parents refuse to accept it after a decade. Also, the attorney Nobody general... wants to accept that their kid killed themselves. 
No, but do you know how many people kill themselves and all of them? Yeah, I know. You I'm know just I mean? saying it's it's easier if you have someone to blame. That's that's all. I'm not yeah. saying it's right. I'm just saying like for a parent. It's sad though because it's still going on. Like, right. and it's been 12 years, so it's like. I mean, I know people can grieve for a lifetime. I'm not saying that they're wrong for grieving, but to still be that angry and harbor that, like, question of, is this what happened? You know what I mean? Plus, the thing is, they're never going to get answers. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so the attorney general ended up releasing that more information was found in addition to the crime scene that supports their theory of suicide. Ellen had searched painless suicide methods several times off these laptops that they retrieved. Originally, that wasn't in the investigation report because, remember, the uncle and the cousin took the laptop. So in the first report, that that wasn't in there. So the report that the newspaper released. Let me play include... devil's advocate real quick. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just want to say that considering the fact that she wasn't the only one with access to this computer it cannot Mm -hmm. be proven that she was the one that was googling those things does that make sense do you get what i'm saying i yeah i had the same thought because that's i'm naturally i'm a skeptic so i absolutely i thought thought the same way everybody is a suspect to me (laughs) yeah so in my mind like the way the investigation probably worked was this so they have the um the date time and ip address so that concludes that the searches were before her death and at her apartment on their wi-fi well that's fine i assumed that i just mean you can't you can't definitively say who was the one on the computer yeah i agree i think that just knowing that though plus like she had the notebook because she was supposed to track her mental state which means that it wasn't stable anyway um no i'm sure it was her i'm just saying they could pick that apart in court i agree i think that's why the parents don't want to um let it go i think and this is assumptive okay so i'm not trying to sound insensitive but at the end of the day if i'm insensitive bitch that's part of who i am so if you don't like it get the fuck off this goddamn podcast but correct i think that part people grieve differently and so and i wonder since it's been so fucking long you guys can't still be confused he never killed anybody else you know what i mean like he he doesn't have like a string of exes that have mysteriously died around him yeah so i feel like maybe maybe you believe she did kill herself and it's hard because she asked to move back home because she was struggling and you told her a little guilt yeah, and I feel like not only that, but keeping yourself busy with different people's opinions, like it's gonna take for a whole bunch of experts to be like, you know what? It's just it's hard to accept, but it is what it is, and they're gonna get angry. And then after so many people tell you like like your daughter did kill herself and that's really right. unfortunate. You know what I mean? Like at what point are you just gonna accept it? I feel like they're just Uh-oh. trying to stay busy because they don't that's want the to. That's the thing is no parent wants to accept that. Yeah. It's Especially be like the if they miss the ever. signs. It's, man, trust yeah. me, I'm learning a lot. <laughs> here's here's what I hate about mental health. A lot of people think that depression leads to suicide, and it just might. But ang- anxious people kill themselves too. Yeah. Impulsively. And I don't think that anxious people plan it out for so long like depressed people might and these are not absolutes these aren't facts these are just like my own insights based off like my own love of true crime and you know what I mean um also everybody gets anxious and everybody gets sad and some people go through sad periods so we all think that we struggle with depression here and there and then we feel better again it's way different from the level of anxiety and depression that these people feel so absolutely I just wish there was a different word for it because then I think it would be taken more serious because if somebody's just struggling with anxiety, who's not anxious in this world? You know what I mean? Like, God we're damn. All... <laughs> Ever since 2020, fucking, I feel like everybody's got anxiety. Yeah. But I'm just saying, like, the world moves so fast. Like, yeah. 
we all have to work. Everybody, no matter how much you make, unless you're like a billionaire, you have financial worries. You know what I mean? Like everybody has anxious moments. So I feel like suicidal anxiousness, that's, that's different. a different thing. Yeah. So yeah, people love to build conspiracy theories in times like this and look for confirmation biases, but it really <clears throat> just was a messy, loose investigation. It doesn't mean that their lack of communication and broken policies can change a suicide to a homicide. Mind you, also, Sam had been there for the parents for about a year after the incident, despite them insinuating that he was guilty of murdering his fiance. Um, and then he moved on with his life. And in 2014, he remarried and he has kids now. Yeah. She's but still I think alive. That that... <laughs> yeah. I think that that bothered the parents, though. You know, like, how could you move on? But Yeah, but they could feel the same way if she died in a car accident. Yeah, absolutely. You know, some people just don't think it's right. Now, me... Also- as myself i mean it's it's easy for me to sit here and say that if anything ever happened to my husband like that's it i'd never be with anyone again and that is 100 percent how i feel right now but that doesn't mean that a year or two down the road you know like nobody sets out to move on from their loved one it just one day no. it gets a little easier and a little easier and you just find that person and it just happens And some people move on right away. And I feel like how you deal with stress in your life impacts how you grieve, like, especially in times of loss when people are really watching you, like, how how's this person doing? Yeah, it doesn't point to guilt or innocence or make you look suspicious. Just everybody handles things differently. Right. I mean, my son's dad and I were not together when he was murdered, but that was, like, my toxic best friend. We've known each other since teenage years, so, like... Still to this day, I have a hard time like accepting it. I'm like at war with myself about it sometimes. You know what I mean? So I mean, oh, uh, just just know, one hundred percent, that if I die and this motherfucker has the audacity to ever move on, I'm coming back to haunt his ass. He better grieve the rest of his fucking life. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, I feel like I'm to a place right now where I like want to live life again and stop being so sad and depressed because it really like crippled me you know what I mean and I've never been like a weak person I've grieved before but like Dre was like a a pillar of my identity if you know me right you knew Dre I get it so it's been really really hard but um I'm to a point where I want to like live life again and I have kids and other stuff I gotta focus on but if I was ready to date like as far as my life circumstances, I think that right now would be when I got back to it. And it's been two years, so. I don't want you to date. <laughs> I'm, really, I'm not ready for it. Please just don't. <laughs> I probably won't uh, for a while. But also, there's this phenomenon that. Um, damn, I just lost my train of thought that fucking fast. Phenomenon. Oh, yeah, yeah. So there's this phenomenon that, like, if you ever had, um, like, surgery with your bones and shit, like a spine surgery or arthritis or depression, when it rains and when it snows, it's, like, heavily impacted. It, like, weighs you down. So- yeah, the last few days, because we've been getting so much rain, dude, one of my fucking knees has been just killing me. Yeah, that's, like, a thing that we all experience and nobody really, like, understands why and stuff. Or maybe we do. As far as the depression into that, I'm so happy when it's raining. I love the rain. I love a good rainstorm. Well, that just makes you toxic because you find comfort in a storm. Absolutely, bitch. In the (laughs) middle of a fucking hurricane, I'm out there running in the fucking waves. Love it. (laughs) Yeah, I do love that because that sound is soothing. I don't like no sprinkle and extra wind type shit. Not no cold wind, but if it's like that nice not necessarily warm but that room temp wind and it's like showers heavy showers yeah i love that shit that's that's what puts me to sleep i love it yep it's so yeah so the fact that this happened on um a day there was like a strong blizzard and shit now that shit is depressing (laughs) yeah i mean that's not anything i think that 
can be used in court, but that's just when people like, say I'm... seasonal depression, they literally only fucking mean winter. <laughs> uh because it's goddamn depressing. You know what's really fucking depressing? When I have to suck on cough drops just to talk on my podcast because my <laughs> allergies are so haywire. That's depressing. Bro, it's because you live time. in a place that's full of black mold. You're fucking slowly <laughs> dying in that apartment. I believe it. Damn. God damn. I'm I'm literally going to sue them when you die. <laughs> just so you know. Okay, really quick. I'm working on, like, three other projects outside of this podcast and then another that I'm trying to start. Mm-hmm. And so that's been super time consuming to learn. I'm at a place where I feel like I can commit to this podcast maybe monthly, maybe two times a month. I'm not sure yet. But Sarah also has her own life with her own schedule. Lots been going on with her too. So bear with us. We're not going anywhere. We're in this shit for life, bitch. It's just going to be a little sporadic for the moment. <laughs> yeah. Once we get the flow of things, it'll be back consistent. But um, yeah, one thing you guys will learn about us is neither of us are good with um, life in general. Uh, <laughs> are, are not at all good with prioritizing or schedules or literally juggling anything like at all. We not at all our strong suit yeah uh we both have you got the adhd diagnosis right or you just assume you have it no i got the diagnosis yeah so we're both diagnosed with adhd and ptsd but we both also strongly believe that we probably have a little semi high functioning autism um not sure not sure at all but i don't do well with overwhelm so People yeah, think, I just like, shut down. If I'm overwhelmed, I ain't doing a goddamn thing. That's a. I'm just gonna sit here and stare at the wall then. <laughs> yeah, I might cry a little bit to try to hurry up and get through it so I can go back to life. But yeah, it's exhausting sometimes. Um. Anyway, so yeah, that's that. We will be posting more episodes. So don't fucking unfollow us because we're inactive for a month or two. Disloyal ass bitch. Where you going? Yeah, you gotta be in for the long um, haul. Come on, for better or for worse, bitches. Yeah, but don't forget also email handled by hotheads at gmail.com. Make the subject line blunt force drama. And your story, if it's not too fucking long and drawn out, might be on the next episode that we record. Uh, we also, if we get a lot of you guys um, telling stories and shit, we might just do like an episode where we react to your stories it just depends on how it takes off so yeah yep, absolutely you know what as a matter of fact um i would love for people to give us all their toxic ass stories like that tell us about your crazy ass exes or if you were the crazy fucking ex let's let's hear the toxicity and um if you have any true crime stories or anything that involved you also um, also I want to hear, I want to hear you holding yourself accountable. If that man was whooping your ass, what'd you do to him? Or was he really that crazy? You know what I mean? Absolutely. Because sometimes it is just because the woman pushes a man to his breaking point. We would know because we are those women. Um, There's a difference between you and your kid's dad. Because that was a real predator psychopath. And then me and like my kid's dad. A menace to society. Yeah, and then like me and my kids dad, we we were toxic. I was probably more toxic, but both of us were traumatized because we were just Bonnie and Clyde it out without the murdering other people. That's and shit. so fucking true. <laughs> yeah, so there's a difference between uh, toxic relationships. We want to hear you be self aware and hold yourself accountable. This is a safe place. We're gonna judge you for sure. You could judge Absolutely. us too. We don't give be a fuck. Be prepared to be judged. But yeah, it comes so, from a place of love. And and to be honest with you, I'm going to judge you, but I might be on your side. You never know. So let us know, because allegedly, I hit my son's dad with my car three times, broke his leg the last time. Mm. That's just alleged. Alleged. Yeah. So there's that, again, handled by hotheads at gmail.com. Leave blunt force drama in the subject line. Are you reviewing a book today? Absolutely. Um, okay. So been reading a lot lately since 
I don't even know what what book I uh, reviewed last time, but I'm literally on book 82 of the year right now. Um, so pause, I just pause. Talk- Since the last time we talked about what book you were on, and I was like, I'm halfway through the first book of the year, I've not read one more page. In that yeah, book. I believe that. All right, keep going. <laughs> uh, so I just, I'm going to go back a little bit to a book I read maybe a month or so ago um, called The Good Samaritan by John Mars. It's about a uh, like middle-aged lady who, you know, on the outside seems like just one of those great love thy neighbor citizens. Um, she volunteers at a, uh, it's not a crisis hotline. It's actually like a, a hotline strictly for suicidal people. Um, you're just kind of there to listen to them, uh, give them a safe space to talk. You're not trying to talk them out of anything. But this crazy diabolical bitch, she actually talks them into it and she spends days and weeks grooming them and giving them reasons to kill themselves and tells them exactly how to fucking do it. And uh, she happens to fuck with the wrong person and it severely backfires on her. Uh, It's a pretty intense book. It'll have you extremely pissed off the entire time. Um, Just just her condescending ways and the way that she looks at humanity and the way that she talks about people. It's so fucking sickening. Uh, I hate miserable bitches. Yeah. It's, it's insane. The whole, but it's such a good book. It's so beautifully written. Um, I saved a quote from the book that I really, really liked. And I, I think that you'll feel that it applies to your life. And I know it definitely applies to mine and, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about when I say it, but uh, the quote is, they say the best way to drive a dog mad is to stroke it, then smack it so it never knows where it stands. And I fully fucking believe that. That is literally like every toxic partner constantly loving you and then hating you, and it just drives you crazy. I know you've been there. I've been there. It's, It's literally like just fucking insanity just so nervous walking on eggshells every single day like is he gonna blow up at me today like am I gonna do the wrong thing you know what I mean oh annoying that's that's the difference between toxic and abuse though I feel like toxic can be fun it can be playful it can be passionate yeah because we're both toxic toxic. I mean realistically all adults are is a product of all adults oh. adults are bitch fucking toddlers are toxic don't start with me no no no. i'm not saying all adults are to- are toxic i'm saying all adults are is just big meat suits full of this inner <laughs> child that was shaped by all of your experiences up until that point you know what i'm saying so like me at 20 is different from me at 32 so i don't like when you say meat suit that's what we're wearing <laughs> Oh, fucking gross. Yeah. Uh, so that was my book review. But also, if you guys have any book recommendations, psychological thrillers only, don't be weirdos with your romance shit. Drop them in the inbox for sure. Um, I love a good book recommendation. Hey, I was going to say that, but then I was like, oh, well, I think that she gets paid for specific books that are recommended to her. So I didn't want to add that. Yeah, but uh, I just want to read all the books. That's my goal for life. Okay uh yeah so <laughs> yeah we did blood force drama your book review i think we we're gonna uh, add another segment but i'm not really sure what it was because it's been i so want long, everyone but... to be on the lookout for merchandise coming in the next few months um shirts hoodies uh stickers all of that will be dropping soon i know i haven't talked to you about it yet Brittany, but um with the collabs I have going on and stuff, it'll make it really easy. So, yeah, we're going to start getting some yep. stuff out there, start representing, um, maybe have a giveaway coming soon if we can get enough followers. So do us a favor. Everybody go to our Twitter or our Facebook or wherever. Like and follow our pages. Um, follow our podcast. Subscribe. All of that. Anything that just gets our name out there a little bit more and we'll do a fun giveaway do some merchandise for you guys 
Yeah, we are wherever you get your podcast from. We're published there. Um, also, we have a Facebook and Instagram at Handled by Hotheads, TikTok, Handled by Hotheads. Twitter is the only one that's different because somebody already had Handled by Hotheads. So it's HBHH podcast um, as the, or I, we can't even say Twitter anymore. It's X now. Shut up. Damn. This is Twitter. Don't fucking start with me. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. But yep. The old Twitter, new X, HBHH podcast. So interact with us. Oh, YouTube too. Um, comment on our shit. Suggest if you want us to cover any other cases. Listen to me. If you put some old shit, Sarah's gonna have to agree or disagree because I'm not doing anything before like 2015. This was 2011 today, and it was still like old to me, even though I was 20. <laughs> but what 2015 and newer there's so many people that get killed every day and then this wasn't even a homicide it was a suicide but it was so controversial that it had to be looked at by homicide detectives so i felt like it was worth making the podcast but if you have anybody else that you want to hear us cover and talk our shit about well let us know yeah that's all we have for today and we'll see you you next time inbox us and just talk shit to us that's fine uh We'll embarrass you on the next podcast by reading the whole entire thing, including your email address, but feel free to do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, we don't know when the next time is going to be. We don't got to explain shit to you, but we'll yeah, be back. You know what? You'll be surprised. You'll get it when you get it. We're done saying we'll be back next week. Maybe we'll be back tomorrow. I Just swear when I started out. this, I think me starting a second podcast made me feel like... <sighs> I'm not going to sit here and try to be professional and do copycat shit like other people. I'm just going to be myself now. I'm going to stop holding back. I haven't all the way held back on this one, but um, I feel like I over explain like little shit. Like, I don't mean to sound insensitive. I don't give a fuck if I sound insensitive, if we're being completely honest. Yeah, it's a it's a cruel, cold, hard world out there. Fuck you. Yeah. And if we have any musicians that... um or beat makers, beat producers that can help us with little jingles at the end of our, I have a hard time. I always do something different for the outro, but I want us to have like our own. We can just record ourselves beatboxing. (laughs) 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 Okay. Yeah, we could do that. Um, Or, you know, just hit us the fuck up. Promo your business. We might fuck around and shout you out. You might be a part of our podcast in the future. So, yeah. Okay, till next time. Adios, amigos.